call the meeting to order. Okay. And um, so, oh, there's Matt. He's, hey, Matt. Hi. Um, <coughs> I think uh, I went through the numbers and everything seemed to accord with what Julianne pulled together yesterday during our meeting. And I think we just need a formal vote. Well, first of all, we need to approve the minutes of the last meeting. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, um, which I sent out. Did you all have a chance to read them thoroughly? <laughs> it's so long. Yeah, Jenny did a great job on the accessibility discussion. I think that's great. And um, I think we did well. So do I have a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept the minutes. Thank you. And a second? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> any, um, any comments about them? Changes, corrections? Um, hearing none, uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, um, raise your hands and... Um. You, you can't do raised hands. You have to oh, do a right. roll call. I'm sorry. I have to do a roll call. Okay. Gigi, yes. Uh, Jenny? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Julianne? Yes. Cole? Yes. Okay. Um, Matt? Aye. And Rachel? Yes. Did I, I think I have all the voting members, right? Okay, thank you. Have all. Um, so next we vote on the allocation of funds. And I guess, does anybody have any questions about, about them? Do we need I, to run through them one more time or are we, we we're well, good? numbers are all good? The numbers are good. I'll be happy to read through it if anybody wants me to. Yay. So I, I do not want you to read through the numbers. Okay, um, I won't read through the numbers. <laughs> I'm okay. hoping to just clarify our bottom line number. The um, bottom line number is... Know, well, not, not the number itself. We've allocated $43,255 plus the $2,500 for the accessibility initiative. So, right. So, if, um, so what I wanted to verify was the carryover admin funds that are, are not admin, the carryover right. funds from previous years, have right. those been touched or have they been added to the total? So traditionally, we wait a year. So this this amount includes about five thousand dollars. It's a little more than that from fiscal year twenty nineteen. Okay, and then how much does that leave in the reserve? Oh, we still have like nine thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. All right. The, thank you. That's helpful. Yeah, You're that's welcome. great. Yeah. No, it's it's fiscal good year for you. twenty. Fiscal year, 29, fiscal year 2019 is two years ago. Right. Year okay. Now. Yeah. We're in fiscal year 21. I don't know where the time goes. It took me about four years to realize where the extra money came from each fall. <laughs> 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 the, the treasurer never, I don't know. We just never talked about it. It was like this magic amount would appear out of nowhere. <laughs> and, We'd have to use it. Okay, so um, I guess I would accept a motion to approve the allocations that we've made for fiscal year 2021. All right, I'll motion that we vote on our allocation for fiscal year 2021. I'll Thank second you. the motion. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, I will call the roll. Gigi, I say yes. Jenny? Yes. Julianne? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Cole? Yes. Good. Uh-oh, it just, oh, okay. Um, Matt? 
Uh, Rachel? Yes. Okay, did I forget anyone? My list just shifted in the middle. Sandra, did I get you? Yes, you, could, you did, yes. Okay. Good, so that's great. And um, the next step is tomorrow, I'll try to get the denial letters out. We do this by email. And then we wait two weeks, which is the length of time that the people whose grants were denied have to appeal to the Massachusetts Cultural Council. And then after that, Jenny um, and I will send out the letters to the uh, our, our winners of our grant round. So what is a process if anybody does appeal, Gigi? Because you're saying that they would appeal directly to the Mass Cultural Council, and then mm -hmm. does that filter back? And then I guess they get happened? back to us. I've does I've never gone through it. Happen? Okay. So, um, I really don't know what the process is. I I, I would assume that it's something that Minna would talk to me about, and if need be, we'd get you all together to hash it out, but. Um, I, as I say, I've never gone through the process, so I don't know. Sandra, do you remember ever? I, I don't think we've ever had one. See, Sandra's memory goes back. <laughs> I don't know how many years you were the representative of uh, the library on this. Long oh, time. <laughs> long time. So I really don't know. Um, so that is really what we needed to do this this evening. Um, but since we're kind of together, uh, do you, do people want to talk more about the ex the accessibility project? Um, I just have a quick question first. There was a, an email from the Mass Cultural Council uh, mentioning all these other grants that are available, like for festivals and all these other activities, does that mean that people who want to do them on a local basis would just apply directly? Okay. Right, that does okay. not go through us. Okay, all right, yeah. got it. And I think that all of the people who apply to the local cultural councils get got that mailing. Hmm. I think the MCC mailing list has got to be huge. So we don't have to you know, feed feed information like that to our applicants. So they must just be starting their their cycle then. Yeah. Yeah. And did you notice that Governor Baker submitted next year's budget <laughs> yesterday? I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. That. I mean, that was in the newspaper this morning. And it's like, wait a minute. The legislature just approved the budget last November or <laughs> December. So it's a quick cycle. Um, so who would like to be on the accessibility project? Robin Thompson does. Yeah, I would, I would imagine. She's very eager. Matt would. So I would love to work on it as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be really important. And I would, I would think, um, going forward, uh, when it's time to look at our guidelines again, um, you know, maybe accessibility ideas should be part of people's proposals to us when possible. Um, but I think this will be a good, a good experiment to see how it goes. I would Gigi, like I'm Oh, go ahead, Jenny. I just I, I would like to join as well. Okay, great. Okay, that's nice. That's three people. So that's okay, right, Cindy? Oh, it's not sorry, Gigi. I, I think I it's four, four people. Four yeah. people. Is that okay, Cindy? Yeah, it's under five. So we're under good. Five. Under okay. five. Okay. Okay. But that means Gigi, you can't go. Is that fine? That's fine. Okay. This is my last few months on this group. I last mean, wrong. and the. This spring, this, this book thing, I I feel like my time is quite limited. Um, so that's great. And I think, you know, 
when the dust settles and the four of you get together, that'll be great. Matt. Oh, I just wanted to say, just like our previous subcommittee, um, you know, we have four voting members. So that's myself, Jenny, Cole, and Robin. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, just like our last subcommittee, if we are able to have non-voting members and, and they wouldn't tip the quorum balance, I would imagine, mm. I would love to invite uh, all three or three of our um, Amherst High right. folks. I think, you know, you guys would have a great voice, great part of it. So um, I, will Cindy be facilitating the subcommittee meetings as well in terms of Zoom links and all? I forget. Yep. Okay. So <laughs> long yeah. we'd like to... <laughs> <laughs> with glee with joy yeah, so anyway I just so good say, like it, it's okay to write really Sharon and sherry a note about cindy's dedication and helpfulness for this <laughs> oh you're right Gigi. we should we should do that as a as a group actually yeah. it's a great idea yeah um but anyway i would love to have our our um, that would be great representatives uh participate I think it'll be yeah. a good, good learning experience too, actually. And That's why um, I want to do it, just just to see what's out there and and understand it back a little to you bit better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The accessibility world in our area. I, I know I didn't jump to join. I'll join other things, but one thing I mean, I think that might be worth looking into aside from our money and our donations might be if anybody wants to learn about what grants are available in addition. There must be all kinds of grants um, other than you know us that we could point people to. Hmm. Might be great to just, especially as we kind of roll into the next year and we add more of this to our own requirements, mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt as a general thing to, to kind of publish a list right. of, of resources and potential other sources of funding. On our Facebook page. I'm um, wondering if Arts Extension Service has any of this as well. Mm -hmm. um, I could I could check in because I think they they have <clears throat> they have all kinds of resources anyway, but they may have some accessibility for arts um, right. resources. I'm going to write that down. So, what would be the timeline for this? Like, when would be like the next uh, or the first well, I guess, update or periodic check-in would that be yeah i think that's that's what i was kind of hoping maybe a little further discussion from the larger sure. council in terms of you know setting out um what the you know what what the tasks are or the you know the general direction is for this subcommittee and i think rachel to to that point you know if we have a if we have a, a full council meeting on the books for whatever march 15th right. or something you know then i think the smaller committee can pace itself to that date you know right um but but i'm also just i mean the things that were discussed last night were obviously you know just literally distributing the 2500 in the best most equitable way to uh you know for closed captioning asl and, and just starting that just getting that process started so I would actually want to explicitly know that, you know, this council had sort of empowered the subcommittee to make those arrangements with people and, and you know, for them to, I guess they would send their bills to city hall is, is how that would work, I guess. Well, I think they'd have to go to the treasurer who then takes them to city hall. Okay, so, yeah. so when, we, when we set up with the vendor, we would literally tell them, hey, you know, reach out to the Amherst Town Treasurer and, and that's, they'll arrange payment through there. Um, or would we pay straight ahead? Would we be paying for them? They'd need to reach out to Robin, the oh, ACC our Treasurer. Our Treasurer. Yeah. Oh, oh okay, to Robin. I'm sorry. And I, missed, I, missed I would assume um, they could use the same uh, MCC reimbursement form that they use for the project grants um and then they the person who's getting the money has to submit invoices from their vendors um and then they get reimbursed so it's all on a reimbursement okay 
Well, now um, that's, that's actually, that raises a question. So um, my thinking was that this for, for this year, at least, it makes more sense for us as a council to find the, learn the dates from our grantees, give those dates to the contractor to do the accessibility work and, and for us to pay the contractor directly as opposed to trying to run it through the artists and, and sub subcontract through them. And, and maybe in the future, you know, we can, we can ask artists to do this on their own, but this year it feels a little, it's already, it already feels a little, um, wild and woolly just to make it all happen. Well, it is pretty uh, wild. Without really. introducing, you know. Yeah. I agree, I Matt. saw Jenny <laughs> I, I nodding in deep I agree, agreement. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to send a letter that says, hey, we want you to do all this accessibility stuff and hey, you get to pay for it up front. Yeah, you get to fork over all the cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, but, I would but I'm kind just of to know that Robin can. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the process would be one of our committee members approaching, I think it's, it's better one-on-one -on -one and maybe a phone conversation to really explain what's up. Yeah. And then, and then go to writing so that things are documented. But so the process would be one contact and then, um, you know, there's probably no real reason to find multiple providers of these services beyond what you've done already, Matt, unless you really think there's a lot out there. Well, there are a lot out there. And I also am sensitive to procurement rules. Um, and I don't know if there is anything within that um, domain. I hate to even say it with, without Robin here, but you know, I can, um, I can answer this that. Would be a, a service. Now. She can answer Thank that. She... <laughs> um, of course, it, she can. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't Cindy. fall under the procurement. Is is it would have to be above twenty five hundred for um, any one vendor. So we we'd be fine. Um, okay. And also, I think that there's a way that we can have the vendors submit their invoices to us and the town can pay them so that the council doesn't have to do it but i will double check that and find that out oh that'd be great, that'd be great. that would be that would be great so then the other piece um the other piece that i just wanted to check in on was you know um i think I, i'm not sure who it was i, I think it was either Leah or Sydney yesterday said, well, if we're doing this, you know, we should, we should, we should get some press. And if we get some press, we should be able to get some money. So I'm bringing us back to the conversation of, you know, are we ready to take donations yet? Right. So I wrote to Paul Bockelman and he has not answered no. <laughs> um, that sounds like a yes a good, to me. Which is a good thing, right? <laughs> I think. Usually he's very proactive, but this vaccine rollout has been so bumpy that I think town hall is on the skids from it. Um, Did you uh, ask him about the, you mean the property tax checkbox? I asked what? about, I asked about GoFundMe, I think, and the okay. property tax thing, okay. um, or a slip of paper that went out with tax bills, but somehow getting something started. Um, I have a quick question uh, about about all of this. We sure. are not a we're not a nonprofit, right? We're not really mm -hmm. incorporated in any way, right? So a lot of the things I could find, I I, I looked into this briefly. Um, the ones that are geared towards charities require you to have a, a, to be registered with the IRS, so you wouldn't be able to use most of those. And I think that rules out Facebook and GoFundMe charity, but not necessarily the GoFundMe for individuals. I don't know how that would work though. Can I speak to that again? Um, <laughs> so I can get the IRS information so that we can um, use that if that's an avenue you wanna go. Cool. I, the one thing I thought, and I, it may have been you called that at our last meeting, somebody raised the concern that, you know, are we doing this on a 
project are we treating it as though it was a project and personally i think we should i think we should treat you know fy22 as a project a gofundme project and set a goal and say we want to match we want to locally match the state award in fy22 and that's or whatever you know some kind of ambitious fundraising goal and use gofundme that way but i think you know there's a va very valid like question of would something like um, PayPal, you know, would, would some other more just straight transactional thing that mm -hmm. doesn't have the whole project aspect to it, would that be more straightforward if we just had a PayPal or a Venmo link and people just, oh, I want to donate some money and they Venmo it and they get a receipt. So that's that for me, that's where kind of the decision point lies. I don't really know what, what my preference is, to be honest. And is that going to be rolled out at a later stage after the grants have been made, or is that going to happen simultaneously? I guess my question well, is, is the accessibility fund that we, we have set aside, is that going to be made available to the entire um, group of people who have, whose grants applications have been accepted, right? Is that here we have this pot of money for accessibility, or are we targeting specific um, projects that might be most suited. So I, I guess I'm, I don't understand, like, you know, if, if the subcommittee right. is going to be targeting it's, specific yeah. so projects. The, the, the cart and the horse there is, mm -hmm. is that this, this accessibility work um, is something that can drive public relations. So maybe some new, it's just a nice thing to, to highlight. And then when we highlight that in the public, it would be nice once we have people's attention to then ask them for money. So, so really the, the donations are not in any direct way connected to the accessibility funds. Right. It's just that this is one more way in which we can um, solicit, you know, I don't know, motivate the solicitation. Okay. So that's kind of like a part of the process. Then I guess the question still is, would you as the subcommittee approach specific targeted um, grantees for the accessibility, or is it going to be I a blanket, think, blanket, um, um, you know? Well, we don't have enough for a blanket. So I think the subcommittee should take a look at the funded projects as Matt has already done um, and pick the ones for which you think the uh, accessibility would be best. Um, and target, create a list of preferences and start at the top and work down until you've used up approximately $2,500. And if you go over a little bit, that's, that's all right, because we have about $9,000 um, in an account. I guess what would be great is, um, So I can't, we can't really announce um, any grants until the letters have gone out, which means they, and they can't go out until this two week denial period is over. So, you know, at some point I'll, you know, be happy to write, a, you know, PR piece about the funds that, you know, we've allocated or the projects that we're supporting um, and if, and then in that, in that kind of PR piece, I can mention that we're alloc we've allocated $2,500 to support, um, closed captioning and, you know, signing for, um, certain projects and see what happens. So Gigi, I was actually thinking, I mean, the press, we put the time into the press release and for some reason it didn't get in. I, I was going to say that we might want to just track down, um, not Mezbach, but there's another, somebody at the uh, uh, Gazette who just wrote a piece on the Mass Cultural Council distribution of grants. I would just say calling him or emailing that, him. Steve and, Far you know, Far I mean, sometimes the press, I, I forget the name, I would have to go look it up. But, but my point being, you know, that not, sometimes reporters just prefer to sort of find their own story and as opposed to giving them a, a press release on on something um, because I I hate to spend the time to write another 
press release that doesn't go anywhere. Um, I know. Well, that's but, you know, but in, in any event. Another idea would be to reach out to whatever local chapter we have for Americans with disabilities, the ADA, hmm. and let them know that we're, you know, trying to nurture this in the community. And it might be that their PR group actually co-authors a press release and that they issue it and it gets more attention. Hmm. Is there such a group? I mean, do they, are there? Well, that's there, a there lot. definitely a group. I don't know if they do local stuff. Because um, they would already have all the press contacts um, yeah. in their system. So it would just be a lot more straightforward. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, no, I, I totally agree with that approach. Okay. So in, in any of you, so can we, can we figure out the fundraising vehicle itself? Like how are we going to get the money? Um, I think we almost need a fundraising committee, you know, that, mm -hmm. that it doesn't I, all have to be, you know, on, on providing, you know, access and, well, we just need a Venmo link or, you know, a Venmo link, a PayPal, yeah. just, you know, I, I mean, I'm looking at Cindy. What do you know what's possible with the town or not? We've kind of. I don't, but I can find out. I mean, I can easily find out what we can do. Okay. So I, I mean, can bottom line, that. I mean, I could write a check right now and send it to town hall care of the council, cultural council and make a donation. You know, like we're right. already able to take people's oh, money. Yeah. It's just, all I'm looking for is a link. <laughs> Cause right. you know, Something cause that's, that's how, simple. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to complicate it. So, so I, I mean, Venmo, go ahead. Sorry, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, the, the town is very, a little bit behind on the, on the technology of, of that. So, um, but I, I think that because of the COVID they've moved more um, online. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get you a, an answer. Okay, well, they already said we could do a uh, GoFundMe page. So, I mean, we know that they're willing to do this. So, I mean, that we could do that now. And yeah. if we prefer to Venmo or PayPal, we could do that instead, but. Yeah, I don't know that Robin talked about to um, Holly about um, the GoFundMe. So I don't know the details of that. I don't either. Yeah. But, but she said yes. I mean, that Robin reported to us that she said yes. Right. But nothing's oh. been made yet. <clears throat> we mm -hmm. don't we don't have a page, a GoFundMe page yet. No. Okay. No, we don't. Okay. And we I, I mean we might as well just just use that vehicle if you know if it's already approved. Um, I mean, ultimately, this money is just going to go to the town to the town's account for us to use in the next cycle. It's not anything fancy. Right. right. So, in terms of time frame, um, are do we have our high school our student um, council members beyond the summer? Are what is yes, the term? They have three year terms. Oh, years. good. It is three years. Okay, no, great. they're sophomores. Okay. And if that's they why stay we treat as sophomores. If, and if any of them stay in Amherst for college, they can <laughs> keep on trucking or work because um, they can have two, three year terms. Great. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. No, we've got them. Well, actually, could they be voting members when they turn, you know, on their second term? Could they come back as voting members? Well, we have a limit of nine, don't we? Well, I'm sorry, they could apply to become voting they members. They could apply to become voting members, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like they could, that. I mean, when you and Sandra are, I think term ends in June, so there'll be two right. vacancies there. Yeah. Well, is there, so. So. It froze again. Did I freeze? No, I think Matt did. Did you have a question, Matt? Oh, I don't know. I was going to start asking questions about, you know, is there a certain age at which you, you know, you have to be a certain age to become a voting member, but I, I'm going to go ahead and guess the answer is no. <laughs> I don't right. know. I don't know. What but um, any, anyway, I, I, I would say that it sounds like if Robin's going to be on the accessibility committee, you know, she can, she can take this kind of over the finish line and, and 
we'll get a mechanism set up and just you know just so that when um when we announce the awards if we get press about accept for any reason right. or no no reason at all within our person i can ask my grandmother to you know donate some money although she would write a check so that's a bad example <laughs> i could ask my wife to donate some money and and uh, right. we have a mechanism to do so that's all yeah. Um, yeah. So the earliest that the um, award letters will actually go out and become publicized would be the second half of February. Is that correct? That would be the correct. soonest, right? Okay. Yeah. What is yeah. your target, like target notice date for getting the letters out beyond the two week appeal period? So right. let's see, today's the 28th, 29th, 30th. If I get them out by February 1st, um, that means the 15th, Jenny and I can start cranking out letters. But my book manuscript is due at the press on February 19th. And, and if, if I'm woefully behind on stuff, then I won't get the letters out until after that date. So we're talking about the, really the third week fourth week of February. Right? Yeah, so you have okay. a lot of time actually okay. for the disability committee. Um, you know, if you could set up a meeting in the next week, um, you could get some decisions made. You could figure out which, which proposals you think are most likely to work well. Um, you could assign, you know, contacts for each person. Um, so you can figure out what mechanism is in place at town hall to accept contributions. The one question I would have for the full council maybe is um, if we should meet in late February, you know, after the letters go out um, mm -hmm. to continue the discussion of, of having a, a showcase for our artists. Right. Um, you know, because I, I think that's something we'd want to set a date for and start to, you know, lay out some of that, that thinking. Um, that yeah, I agree. It sounds like we have just enough going on in general that, you know, we could continue it with monthly meetings, just one, you know, once a yeah. month, with the whole, whole group. So we're talking about the last week of February. Yeah, yeah so some, the week of February 22nd. But it, it sounds like there would be several topics. So there'd be uh, whatever the accessibility committee is reporting back on, we'd want to update the social media. We'd want to talk about fundraising, um, press releases just in general. Pecha Kucha, if it ever could come back. Yep. Um, the other thing, Julianne, is. Um, I don't know why I said, but but the other thing is that we we had our outreach committee meet a handful of times. Right. Um, several several folks did a ton of work on this, especially Leah and Cole. But but I mean everybody contributed and um, you know have started to build I think a really strong social media footprint. Um, and so I just I want to make sure that when the grants go out, I, I know I know they're ready. I mean I, you know I know that that Leah and Cole are ready to turn that around and, and get you know. <laughs> get that message out there. Um, but when the grants, you know, when those award letters go out, we want that list, you know, we want to really take advantage of our of our growing network and, and grow it further. Um, but but you know, that timing, I think will be really, really crucial too. So um, I don't I don't personally think we want to have too many subcommittees going at the same time. I feel like that's, that's a little bit of a stretch for all for all of us. But right. um, mm -hmm. So I like the idea, Julianne, of just having, you know, having our, our social media folks report to the whole council at the end of February. Um, and, and maybe, I mean, I'll just say right now that, that when, um, Gigi, we would post a, a list of all of our awardees to the public site as well, correct? At the same time as the letters? To the, which public site? The well, like the, I guess it's a Mass Cultural Council site has a list of awardees. Oh yeah, they they have them for each of the LCCs. Yeah, but that does that happen at the same time that we send the letters or? Well, it's 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 called the annual report, and it yes, that's it all happens about the same time. Okay. I think yeah, because once that. 
the due date may be March 1st or the 15th. I have to go back and check. Okay. I was just going to say, once that list is sort of up and in, in one place, that's a nice thing for us to point social media towards and, yep. you know, build, build excitement right. and enthusiasm. Well, there could be some way to post the list on our uh, town website, right? I'm sorry, I have to um, go right now, but if there's anything, because me and Leah were working for Instagram on the social media, that kind of thing. So, I mean, you said we're meeting in February, so we can talk about it then. But, okay. Um, I, I'm totally open to working on that too. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Here. Bye bye. Um, yes, the, the list can go on our on our website, the town website, great. if you want. Yeah. 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 Cool. I have a question about, I, there was someone, I think it was Julianne was talking about reaching out to programs with accessibility. If we're like doing all this work about accessibility, it might make sense to like reach out to people who know more about like what like would benefit, like would like maybe closed captioning or ASL, like what would benefit that more? So is this council allowed to reach out to other groups? and meet with them. Okay. In fact, I mean, I'm, I mean, Minna Kim at, in, at the MCC um, is interested in Matt's spreadsheet that he prepared. So I've sent that off. I mean, you know, she may look at it and say, oh, well here, we have a list of all of these groups that provide um, services to cultural organizations. I mean, there, there may well be a mother load. Well, one of the more exciting things about it, um, in my in my opinion, is most of these folks, when you talk to them, what they want to do is they want to bring in people who are visually impaired as um, user testing and, and pay them, you know, to do the testing and to do some of the work, bring in people who are, who are um, deaf and, you know, and have them um, review closed captioning, for example. So, you know, I, I think the one thing I, I want to really I would like to do, and I don't know if we can do it this time, but as much as we can keep the funding local and grow the local network of, um, you know, people with disabilities and, and bring them into it, that, that I think is, is one of my, pri and it's, I don't know how feasible it's going to be in short notice, but, but that, you know, that, that I think should be part of our goal. And, um, and in term, yes, absolutely. It, tapping into other, um, other networks network. as well. I mean, but there should yeah. be some around. I can't believe we have to invent the wheel. Well, I mean, I, I personally don't think Mina Kim was was asking for that list because she had wanted to compare it to hers. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Well, we also have a lot of academic resources we could tap locally in terms of connecting, you know, and cultivating talent because we could actually help, um, um, you know, build a, a pipeline, right, for these services right in yeah, the longer absolutely. term. Okay, hey, Rachel, you, you, you sparked an idea to me when you said academic. Um, one local resource and a group to interview might be UMass's, um, what's it called when, when students have, have disabilities? Um, it's disability. disability. Yes, they, yeah. they, have, <laughs> they, they have a whole group there and they might have some ideas for us. One thing we kind of, I agree with Matt about trying to, if there's income opportunity for people to make locally doing this, we should support that locally. But there might also be just be technology resources mm -hmm. that we could pass along. And, and that group at UMass, um, they know a hell of a lot. Yeah, and I imagine they would have a lot of um, people they're training to work in that. Yeah, quite so, possible. Yeah, so I think those are all things that we can just keep our eyes open. Well, and yeah. someone the other night was speaking or last night was talking about, um, you know, dancers interpreting music. It wouldn't surprise me if at one of the colleges there aren't dance courses to do that, right? At I, I know um, one of the faculty members at UMass um, through Amherst Ballet. And I can, I can email him. He's been pretty busy. He got a big grant, but I could just ask him about that or who he knows for, for intro. Yeah. 
I think um, it'd be interesting. Because he'll know the, like the whole five college consortium involved. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So I can ask um, the director of five college dance too. And so it's interesting because when that idea came up as doing interpretive dance for a piece, because interpretive, that's arguably its own work of art, isn't it? Yeah. So well, I think, dance. and you're actually, we'd be hiring another artist to interpret the right. work of yet I, another just artist. To just to clarify, and I and I completely, you know, we do need to tap into those university networks. Um, I, I reached out to them. I, I use them a lot um, professionally as interpreters for multi language, and they did not. UMass does not employ any sign language interpreters, which was very surprising to me. But, but, you know, no, that's not to say that you know various professors networks won't uncover all kinds of people. So please do, you know, please do those research. I do want well, to say we that also the have the Clark yeah. School up in Northampton, right? But they don't do sign language at all. They don't they, anymore? They, they, they never have. They, they're, they teach kids to speak only. Speak, um, okay. Yeah. So we don't have I'm the Clark say, School for that as yeah. a resource. <laughs> My neighbor who lives down the street used to teach a, um, ASL at, at, uh, at um, oh God, that's where my kid went to school, to um, Pioneer Valley Performing Arts charter school oh yeah she just, she just retired did you know ava fradkin no you, no um she's just retired and i could ask her as well mm. she's very hooked in with asl and perfect in yeah so so the resource that um for in terms of size of network and bang for your buck but the the interpreting resource um through the massachusetts commission for the deaf uh you know somebody who knows asl and who is a certified interpreter they just get their name on there. You know, that's really all it is. And then yep. Commission for the Deaf is a really great network. Um, I want to make, I just want to make a point because this is, I think, interesting to me. And it's something that I, I had a friend who did it years ago. Um, so, so when we talk about sign language interpreting for music and, and incorporating the dance and movement piece of it, I just want to be, it's not interpretive dance. And I, and I think it's, it's important to say what we're talking about are, people who are professional ASL interpreters, sign language interpreters, um, who, will, who will demonstrate the music. But I think interpretive dance and, and you know, that, that's, something, that's an art form right. that artists right. do. This is interpretation. So really their goal is to not interpret in, in the same sense of, you know, putting their own stamp on it, but to, but to be a flow through for the, which is maybe semantic, but I, I think this group can appreciate the, the you know, the nuance. Yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. Good. That's right. Yeah. Um, so looking at the last week in February, Cindy, what night, what late afternoon, five to six 30 ish. <laughs> um, if it could be start at five 30, that would be easier for me, but I, I'll, I'll make whatever you need work. Okay, well, five. What about you getting kicked out of the building? <laughs> if so, if it's five thirty, then I can leave and get home yes. for the meeting. Oh, ah. I see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, any night of the week better, worse for people? I have nothing on my in my life. Wednesday can sometimes be a problem for me, but I really don't know. So, how about Thursdays? Yeah. Are you thinking the 25th of Feb? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll work on that. So that's a, the next full council. That'll be the full, yeah. Okay. Are we looking at starting 4.30 or 5, or is that to be determined? I think 5.30 to 7 is what we... Oh, okay. And should we determine a few dates for the subcommittee over email? Would that be easier? Why yeah. don't you set up the four of you set it up over email and That's link good. Cindy in because she'll have to be part of it too. Yeah, and Rob, yeah, we since we don't have Robin. And Robin, you don't have here. But five thirty on the twenty fifth for for the whole group. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great.
I apologize for multitasking during this. <laughs> yes, there's something going on over there, isn't there? <laughs> my big, huge monitor. That's okay. That's okay. You're wonderful to be to be with us. And so, so shall we? Leah, <laughs> Leah, Nandi, and and I'll ask you to speak for. Can we invite you all to the subcommittee meeting? And then if if any of you can come, you're welcome. And if you can't make it, then that's okay. I would definitely love to be there. Yeah. Good. Okay. Neat. Okay. Let's adjourn. I have to go cook supper. All right. I'm going to email everybody again about Pecha Kucha. I like your radish idea. Did you like the radish idea? It doesn't have to be anything other than just something that you love. And I, I have a question before. Go ahead, yeah. Julianne. Go ahead, Julianne. You. I'm done. Okay. Um, when I just want to raise this so people can think about it and we don't need to make a decision right now because um, the spreadsheet that we all use to evaluate the grants was something that I kind of created not having ever gone through the grant cycle. Right, so right. I think I think um, at some point it'd be really useful. I, I you know would would be happy to um, yeah set up or tweak something that might be better for next round. So at some point, you know, it'd be really great to get people's feedback on how this went and what should be improved. So right. I just want to put that in the agenda at some point. That's a good okay. I did not know you did that. Thank the, you very the, much. That the temp really the nice template thing. I just kind of like pulled out of my, you know, based on talking to everybody. And and thank you so much, Julianne, for doing all the number crunching between then and now. So I think we worked really well on the, on that front. But I think it was just something me, Matt, not, not knowing how to, the process worked to say, okay, well, if these are the criteria, how would this template work? So I think, you know, just please maybe in February we can discuss what's Oh, absolutely. To evaluate sure. for a better process going forward. And thank you, Matt, for doing the um, accessibility spreadsheet. I think that was really useful. Um, so sure. thank you. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a Bye. good week. You too. Thanks, Cindy. Thank Take you care, all. Everybody. Thanks, Cindy. Bye.